Our lungs are the primary organs of our respiratory system and they function in the process of breathing. Now breathing is a simple process of inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide. And breathing is also known as ventilation or respiration. Now this respiration process is not the same thing as cellular respiration that takes place within the individual cells of our body. Cellular respiration is when our cell uses oxygen to produce ATP and produces carbon dioxide as a byproduct, but respiration is simply the breathing process, the process by which we inhale oxygen and we exhale, we expel our carbon dioxide. So our lungs are specialized organs that are responsible for carrying out this process of breathing so inside our lung inside the lungs we have many tiny microscopic specialized sac like structures we call alveoli and these alveoli are specialized in exchanging oxygen for carbon dioxide and the lungs ultimately expel that carbon dioxide to the outside of our body to the outside environment now the question we're going to explore and answer in this lecture is how the process of breathing, how the process of ventilation actually takes place inside our lungs. So we're going to describe the mechanism by which ventilation is carried out inside human lungs. Now let's begin by breaking down the process of ventilation into two stages, into two processes. We have the process of inhalation and the process of uh, exhalation. And these two processes are actually opposite with respect to one another. Inhalation is when we bring air into the lungs and exhalation is the process by which we expel the air from the lungs into the outside environment and more specifically inhalation we bring in oxygen and exhalation we expel we remove the carbon dioxide that is produced inside our cells as a result of a byproduct of let's say cellular respiration which once again is not the same thing as respiration breathing that we're focusing on in this lecture. So let's begin by describing how inhalation is carried out by the lungs. So let's take a look at the following diagram. Now in this diagram, we have our respiratory system. We have the windpipe, also known as the uh, trachea, which bifurcates at the bottom. It breaks down, it splits into the right bronchi and the left bronchi, and these bronchi connect to the right and our left lung. So the right right lung and our left lung. Now remember the lungs are actually enclosed in a double layer structure known as our pleura. So the outer membrane of the pleura is known as the parietal pleura and the inner membrane of the pleura is known as the visceral pleura. And in between these two membranes we have the space we call intrapleural space or our intrapleural cavity. And inside this cavity, we basically have a special type of fluid that decreases the friction that takes place, that exists as a result of that process of breathing. Now, these structures are basically the ribs, and this is our rib cage. Now, in between the ribs, we have these red portions, and that is the external intercoastal muscle, a type of skeletal muscle. And beneath the lungs, we have another type of skeletal muscle we call the diaphragm. The diaphragm is basically a dome-shaped skeletal muscle that is found below the lungs and which separates the thoracic cavity, the chest cavity where the lungs are found, and our abdominal cavity which is found beneath our diaphragm. So let's describe how inhalation actually takes place. So the diaphragm as well as these external intercoastal muscles found, beneath, uh, found between our ribs begin to actually use ATP and contract. 
So the process of inhalation is an active process because it requires using ATP for muscle contraction. Now, as the diaphragm begins to contract, it begins to flatten out. So it moves in the following general direction. Now, the diaphragm is actually connected to the chest cavity, our, thora uh, our thoracic cavity. And as the diaphragm flattens down, it increases the space inside our chest cavity. It increases the volume inside that chest cavity. Now, as the external intercourse coastal muscles contract, they also increase the space inside our chest cavity. And that's because as these muscles contract, they essentially uh, increase our rib cage size. They move the rib cage outward and that increases the overall space inside our thoracic cavity, inside the chest cavity. Now, in the same time that the space inside the chest cavity increases, what also increases is the space inside the intrapleural space. So the volume inside this entire region that is found between the parietal and the visceral pleura basically increases. Now, let's recall Boyle's Law. We know that in physics, Boyle's Law describes the relationship between volume and pressure when the temperature is held constant. And because our body is at a constant, uh, at a constant temperature of 36.7 degrees Celsius, we can assume that this obeys Boyle's Law, meaning the temperature is constant. Now, Boyle's law tells us that the pressure multiplied by the volume is equal to a constant value, and that gives us an inverse relationship between pressure and volume. So, as the volume increases inside the intrapleural space by Boyle's law, the pressure must decrease. Now, what exactly is the pressure inside the lungs? Well, the pressure inside this space of our lungs is known as the intra, uh, uh, intrapulmonary um, pressure. And the intrapulmonary pressure is the same as the atmospheric pressure because the lungs are actually exposed to our environment. And what that means is inside our lungs, if the pressure outside the body is, let's say, one atmospheric pressure, then the pressure inside the lungs is also one ATM. Now, as our diaphragm flattens down and as the rib cage increases, that increases the volume inside the intrapleural space and that decreases the pressure inside that space. And eventually, the pressure inside the space will basically decrease to a point where it will be lower than the pressure inside our lungs than atmospheric pressure. And at this point, there exists a pressure gradient, a difference in pressure such that inside the intrapleural space, we have a low pressure and in the outside of our body and inside the lungs, we have a higher pressure. And at that particular point, when the intrapleural space has a pressure that is lower than the pressure inside the intrapulmonary area, then our air will begin to move down its gradient, down the pressure gradient, from a high pressure to a low pressure. So in the same exact way that a marker or any other mass will always move down its potential gradient, gravitational potential gradient, from a high potential to a low potential, molecules, air molecules, will also always move from a higher pressure to a low pressure. And that's exactly why when the diaphragm flattens down and when the external intercoastal muscles contract and expand the rib cage, that increases the volume and decreases the pressure inside the intra uh, intrapleural space and that creates a pressure difference, also known as a pressure differential or negative pressure. And now our air molecules move from a high pressure to, from the outside to the inside into our lungs. Now, actually, I don't like using this term called negative pressure because it's misleading. 
we know from physics that pressure is simply the force that molecules exert on a certain area. Now, if we are inside a container and inside that container we have no molecules, then the absolute pressure inside that container is zero. Now, what exactly is negative pressure? Well, negative pressure means inside our container we must have negative number of molecules and of course that's impossible. How can we have a negative number of molecules inside a container? The smallest number of molecules that we can have inside a container is zero. In that case, we have a vol we have a vacuum and our pressure is zero, but we can never actually have negative pressure. Now, technically what they mean when they say negative pressure is a negative pressure difference. And what a negative pressure difference is when we subtract the high pressure and the low pressure, we get a negative value because the change in pressure values is a negative quantity. So you should be careful in using this term negative pressure because negative pressure doesn't make sense, but negative pressure difference does in fact make sense. So let's take a look at the following diagram which describes what I just discussed. So this diagram describes the curve for Boyle's law. So the y-axis is the pressure inside the intrapleural space and the x-axis is the volume inside that intrapleural space. And this curve describes Boyle's law PV multiplied by constant where V is the volume uh, is equal to a constant where V is the volume and P is our pressure. So when we essentially inhale, the diaphragm flattens down, the rib cage expands as a result of the external intercoastal muscles contracting, and we basically move down the following curve from the initial point where we're fully relaxed to this final point on the curve where we're fully contracted. So fully relaxed and fully contracted. Now, as we move down, the volume inside the space increases and that decreases the pressure inside the intrapleural space. Eventually, the pressure at the end of the contraction is less than the atmospheric pressure that is given by the following blue line. At that point, we have this difference in pressure known as the pressure difference or the negative pressure difference and that creates that pressure pressure gradient that is needed to actually allow the movement of the air from the outside environment and into our lungs. At this point, air rushes into the lungs and inhalation actually takes place. And once again, inhalation is an active process. It needs ATP because our muscles need ATP to actually contract. Now, once the lungs are filled with air, the individual alveoli of the lungs essentially exchange the carbon dioxide and oxygen. We take in oxygen into the capillaries of our body and we expel our carbon dioxide from the capillaries and to our lungs, eventually expelling them to the outside. Now, once we exchange the oxygen for carbon dioxide, how exactly does exhalation actually take place? Well, once we're at this stage, what happens is the diaphragm and these intercoastal, external intercoastal muscles begin to relax. And as they begin to relax, we're essentially moving in the opposite direction along the following curve. So the diaphragm begins to recreate the following dome shape and that pushes on our cavity and it pushes on the space inside and the rib cage as it basically decreases in size. It also forces our volume inside the intrapleural space to decrease. And by Boyle's law, when we decrease our volume, we increase our pressure as long as the temperature is allowed to be constant. And so what happens is because the pressure inside our intrapleural space drops, eventually,
the pressure inside the intrapleural space at the end of that relaxation where when we're at this point the pressure inside the intrapleural space will be uh, greater than the pressure outside of our environment so outside of the body and inside the lung and in that case that pressure gradient will force the air to move from the lungs to the outside and at that point these two quantities are switched so when we're uh, exhaling the pressure inside the intrapleural space is greater than the pressure in the outside environment our atmospheric pressure and so at that point when we're right here we have exhalation taking place so this is the process by which our lungs carry out the process of breathing this is the mechanism by which the lungs carry out the process of breathing